the joy, the smile, the passion, the clothes, the toughness, the love, the work ethic, and of course, the controversy. Cam Newton is flawed. He wears his emotion on his sleeve. He's a little bit eccentric, type A personality, sometimes a little extra, but damn it, he's one of my favorite players of all time. And not in spite of those things, in many ways, because of those things. He's human, he falls, he makes mistakes, he gets up, smiles, scores a touchdown, and then dance in your mother face. Yo, Cam Newton is one of, if not the most misunderstood players of all time. You're talking about a guy who leaves it all out there, take hits that I've never seen any other quarterback take, always in shape, loved by his coaches, loved by his teammates, all while simultaneously being hated by a whole lot of people. He's charismatic, enigmatic, and yes, dramatic a complex character who brought joy passion and most importantly fun to the game at a time where it was desperately needed this is what happened to cam newton cue the wang Cameron Jarrell Newton was born in Atlanta, Georgia in 1989. His dad, Cecil Newton, was one of those dads that stressed the importance of sports. He also stressed the hard work it took to get to the top level of them to all three of his sons. Now, sometimes I have to really come on here and stress how good a player was in high school, but with Cam Newton, if you've seen him play NFL ball, it's not hard to imagine. Basically, just imagine that same Superman playing for the Panthers, running around playing against slower, smaller guys than he had to in the NFL. Dude dominated, okay? He was a five-star recruit and the number two dual threat QB in the nation. Tyrod Taylor was actually ranked number one in that category, FYI. Cam committed to the University of Florida at the start of his senior season in high school. That same year, a college freshman by the name of Tim Tebow threw for 358 yards and ran for another 469 yards and scored an amazing 13 touchdowns as a part-time quarterback at Florida. Cam, never wanted to shy away from competition, decided to attend the school anyway. With that said, there's no way he could have been prepared for the Tebow mania that would ensue the following year. So in 2007, a guy who would later go on to win a Heisman Trophy, a national championship, and have one of the greatest college seasons of all time was stuck on a bench behind another guy who would go on to win a Heisman Trophy and a national championship and go on to have some of the best college seasons of all time. So there you go. An embarrassment of riches at Florida that year. Cam played sparingly as Tebow went on to win the Heisman that year, 2007. Still, Cam won over a lot of his teammates at practices as he was the only quarterback crazy enough to jump into the Oklahoma drill and actually dominate dude. To this day, this man somehow doesn't get enough credit for his toughness. I don't wanna hear about the toughness of no quarterback if you're not gonna mention Cam Newton. Talk about it. The following year, Cam got playing time in the season opener, but injured his ankle and missed most of the year. Didn't take long before that idle time led to bad choices either. All right, here we go, the stolen laptop. What actually happened? The reports don't really give a clear picture and even the victim himself, the guy who got his laptop stolen, said he does not know if Cam is the guy who actually stole his laptop. What we do know is Cam is the guy who ended up with the laptop, so, you know, there we go. Based on my own personal experiences, I got two theories. I think it probably went one of two ways. Theory one, the guy left the laptop somewhere, Cam came across it, realized there was nobody there to claim it, slides it in his bag, he's got a new laptop. Or theory number two, some other student takes the guy's laptop and then sells it for a dirt cheap price to Cam, okay? If that was the case, I'm sure the laptop price would have been low enough to alarm anybody that, yo, this is probably stolen, maybe I shouldn't mess with it. But again, Cam was like 20 years old at this time, he needed a laptop 
really, really bad judgment, he made a mistake. Now, funny enough, I saw stuff like this happen in college and it never went quite as far as this one went, but the police showed up. They actually put in real police work on this and was able to trace the laptop back to Cam's room. They show up, they search the room, they see the laptop, but they wanna make sure that's it before they, they confiscate it, right? So they step out of the room to do some cop stuff, I guess, but when they come back, yo, Yo, Cam, where's the laptop, bro? The laptop is gone. Again, bad judgment by my dog, Cam. Now, what happened is Cam tossed the laptop out the window. Now, that's the part of the story that most people hear, like, oh, he just threw it out the window. Of course, they're going to find it. Well, hang on now. He throws it out the window. He had his boy come by or somebody come by, pick the laptop up and take it to a dumpster. You see what I'm saying? That could have worked if they hadn't already seen the laptop in his room and even had his name and his login information already in the computer, C. Newton caught red-handed. I still got the same question today that I had then. Why did a scholarship football player feel the need to illegally acquire a laptop? It just seems like a basic need for a college kid, but whatever. Cam's my guy, but I ain't gonna sit here and make excuses for him. This was bad decision making by a 20 year old college kid. And some people still judge this man. Now that he's 30 years old, they still judge this man off of a mistake he made a decade ago because the rules change as to what's forgivable and what's not. Basically, it's just depending on who's making the rules and what they've gotten in trouble for and what their friends have gotten in trouble for. All that stuff is cool and it's forgivable, but oh no, but you did though. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I said, they took this pretty far and Cam was arrested on felony charges of burglary, larceny, and obstruction of justice behind this. So everybody that's actually real with yourself that's watching this, just think about how unbelievably fortunate you are from some of the stuff that you did. <laughs> we talk a long, long, long time ago. Cam had messed up and he messed up bad. He actually faced expulsion at Florida, but he participated in a pre-trial program that allowed all the charges to be dropped. So Cam ends up transferring to a junior college called Blinn College. Three days after Cam announced his intent to transfer, Florida won the 2009 BCS National Championship plastering the Gators all over TV and creating an inescapable mental prison for Cam. I bet everywhere he went, everywhere he looked is Florida National Championship, the team that he just could have been a part of. That's gotta be a hard pill to swallow, a difficult thing to deal with, especially at that age. And honestly, the story could have ended there. But this was our first look at the remarkable resilience of Cam Newton. Many guys would have been crushed under the weight of what could have been. Cam made the most of what actually was. In 2009, the same year's former prestigious D1 school had won the national championship, Cam led his not so prestigious junior college to an NJCAA national football championship, okay? This is the definition of making the best of a bad situation. Cam gained nearly 3,500 yards and scored 22 touchdowns. He had refined his game in Florida, gotten bigger, stronger, faster, and much more cerebral as a player. He had something to prove and he proved it. Cam once again was named the top recruit, but this time he was number one. Schools like Oklahoma, Mississippi State, and Auburn were foaming at the mouth to gain this man's services. Cam chose Auburn and even that would later become controversial as Cam's dad was accused of brokering a pay to play deal with the school, an accusation that Cam and his dad have denied. Now I'll be honest, this is an issue for some people. It's a non-issue for me. If it's true, I think Cam's dad was playing with fire, but kids getting paid to go to certain colleges, like it's not a thing that I care about because I believe they should be paid any damn way. Then you wouldn't have to worry about this kid ever being in a position to feel the need to steal a damn laptop. So if, if they got breaded for going to Auburn, I mean, Auburn fans, was it not worth it? In one season at Auburn, Cam never lost one single game. He threw for 2,800 yards with 30 passing touchdowns and only seven interceptions. He completed 67% of his passes and ran for nearly 1,500 yards, scoring another, okay, another 20 touchdowns on the ground. Bro, that is absolutely crazy. After leaving one school right before they won the Natty, 
going to JUCO and winning the championship there. When Cam got back to big time D1 SEC football, dude went straight back to the championship game, gained 320 yards, scored two touchdowns, and won the damn thing. He also won the Heisman Trophy that year as the best player in college football. Sweet redemption as he had just got kicked off the team two years earlier. Like literally in each of the next two years, the man won a championship. That's what's up. Now, as you can see, Cam's career has already had some massive highs and some massive lows. And unfortunately, that same kind of trend would continue. During Cam's championship run, boosters from Mississippi State had been leaking to the media that Cam's dad Cecil Newton told them that it was going to take more than a scholarship to get Cam to play at their school. From the outside looking in, it seemed like they were spiteful. As fellow SEC opponent was going on a run, they looked to drag Cam's name and he already had marks against them, so he was kind of an easy target. As a school who would later get caught up in their own trouble for recruiting scandals, it's clear that Mississippi State's not above this type of thing, so my theory, and it's just my opinion, I have no proof or nothing like that, just my thoughts. I feel like Mississippi State just got outbid. You know what I'm saying? They got outbid. Cam went to Auburn and they was pissed off about it. In the 2011 NFL Draft, Cam Newton was selected first overall by the Panthers. Jimmy Clausen refused to give up the number two jersey Cam wore at Auburn, so cool. Cam wore a number a little more fitting. Cam Newton started in the NFL from day one and threw for over 400 yards in his first ever NFL game. And he did it again in his second game, okay? Although he did throw three picks in that second one. Cam would go on to have a great season by a rookie quarterback stand. 4,000 passing yards, 700 rush yards. His touchdown interception ratio wasn't great. 21 touchdowns and 17 picks. But with Cam and really any quarterback or offensive player, you have to take all of their stats into account. So adding in Cam's rushing stats, and as a rookie, he went for 4,700 yards, scored 35 touchdowns, and threw 17 picks. That sounds way better, and that definitely sounds like rookie of the year numbers. I'm not even gonna check. It wasn't all sweet for Cam though, as dude was criticized for everything from his celebrations to his smile. Yes, they was even criticizing this cat smile, bro. It's kind of ridiculous. It's super ridiculous, but that's just what it was. Basically, one writer said Cam had a fake smile, saying Cam was very disingenuous and comes across as very scripted and selfish. This takes me a lot of places mentally, but I try to have empathy. So the guy who wrote this, I'm trying to see where he was coming from, okay? And basically, this takes me back to what I was saying in the intro at Cam being one of the most misunderstood players of all time. Saying his smile is disingenuous is stupid. It almost seems like you're implying that he has nothing to be that damn happy about. So I'm gonna take that dumbass statement and throw it out. As far as the other statements saying that he comes across as scripted at times, I can see that. And using my empathy, I can see how this writer may have seen that but but here's how i see it cam does not come from the same mold as the majority of first overall picks he doesn't and this isn't even just like a black white thing like you can use russell wilson as as a good example love russ underrated actually but you know just very different two very different people watch this clip real fast from russell wilson so i'm fired up i get to be a part of the amazing amazing nfl flag league and we're going to go global with this thing Obviously, in the United States, we got over 500,000 kids that are playing boys and girls in NFL flag. What do you notice? He sounds very similar to the way he sounds in an interview. A little bit more casual, a little bit more laid back, but very, very similar. Here's a clip of Cam. Hey, one, two, three! Oh! One, two, three! Oh! It's a calm before the storm. Because we about to oh! up right now. Unlike Russ, job interview is not Cam's first language. So when he speaks it, some things get lost in translation. Like a Spanish speaking person whose second language is English. Sometimes when they speak, things get lost in translation the same way you'd probably be if you go and learn a second language. I understand that's not exactly an apples to apples comparison because Cam technically does speak English, but Cam's dialect is very Southern hip hop influenced and the way he communicates on a normal basis is vastly different from your average franchise quarterback. And I'm talking everything from inflections to body language, the whole damn nine yards. And it's not unreasonable to assume that he had people in his ear telling him that he needed media training and he needed to learn how to speak like a franchise quarterback. 
a part of what I think this writer could have been seeing was just a college kid attempting to project the image he thought he needed to project in order to be accepted and looked at as a potential franchise quarterback. Today we know that that's not even necessary as my dog Lamar Jackson doesn't try to dress up his dialect when he speaks he's just authentic and free and for the most part i mean of course he's got his haters but for the most part people seem to love his personality still that may or may not have been the case back when cam was coming up I will say that today when I hear Cam speak, he's a lot more comfortable in his own skin. He probably doesn't have as many people in his ear telling him, yo, you need to be like this or you need to talk like this. And what he's saying and doing with his hands and his expressions and everything, it's just all a lot more congruent. And I mean, he's definitely more comfortable in his skin. And that's what happens as you get older. Cam definitely has some leadership qualities. Dude's magnetic and if you watch All or Nothing, you'll see how his teammates gravitate towards him, but his style is far from perfect. He wears his emotions on his sleeves, and his energy is very infectious. The problem is that can be a double-edged sword. When he's feeling good, playing well, and having fun, the whole team is. But when things aren't going great, he sometimes has a tendency to get a little too frustrated and his negative energy can bring the team down a bit. When I was a kid, I did not understand this, but now that I'm a bit older, I do understand that the quarterback is the leader. And I understand that the temperament of the leader does affect the entire group. I think that's why you see a lot of franchise quarterbacks be a lot more even keel because the guys who get really high emotionally can also sometimes get low. And that usually doesn't bode well for the rest of the team. With that said, no leadership style is perfect as quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers have been said in the past to be aloof and younger receivers at times have had a hard time connecting with quarterbacks like Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. So basically, this isn't an indictment on Cam, just an observation and something that I'm picking out that I definitely think he can continue to improve on. In 2013, Cam made the playoffs for the first time. And in 2014, he won his first playoff game despite dealing with a number of injuries, including an ankle problem that he had to have surgery for and a hairline rib fracture. Still, that year he led the Panthers to their first playoff win in nearly a decade. Then, 2015 happened. A magical season where Cam led the Panthers to a 15-1 record. They went on to win the NFC Championship and make it to the Super Bowl. The season was actually pretty similar to that year at Auburn as Cam nearly went undefeated, won Best Player Award, in this case the NFL MVP, and made it to the championship game. Only this time, Cam's team wasn't able to come out victorious. And it was weird, bro. I remember during warm-up, I looked at my partners who I was watching the game with and I was like, dog. Cam don't look right, man. Like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, and while there are so many theories, I ain't gonna speculate here. This video is not for that. We're not gonna go down the speculation trail. But what we know for a fact, Cam didn't play well. After the game, Cam got a massive amount of criticism for walking out of the press conference early and being a bad sport. So first of all, let me say this. The real reason Cam walked out of the interview was mostly ignored by the majority of the media. Now listen, I'm not saying that the reason he walked out was like justified or that it was okay because it's this reason. I'm just saying, tell me what actually happened and then I'll decide how I feel. The thing that actually triggers the walk off is this. Chris Harris, who is within earshot of Cam, he's in a celebratory mood. Hell, he just won the Super Bowl, so nothing, nothing down on him. Cam's sitting there, he gotta listen to that. It pissed him off. I'm sure he wanted to retaliate, respond. Instead, he didn't say nothing. He got up, he walked off. Probably thinking, yo, why the hell do they have me right here interviewing where I can hear it? Like, that's pretty, that's pretty cold. Now, real quick, I wanna talk about the quarterback who won that Super Bowl, Peyton Manning. I love Peyton Manning. I love watching dude play. I especially love hearing him talk about the game. I'm actually super bummed out that he turned down the Monday night football job. It would have been so dope, but anyway. Peyton's kind of the model citizen as an NFL QB. He's a guy that a lot of people get measured up against. I remember him saying something that, that always stuck out to me and it's never been something that really took over 
Peyton Manning's narrative. He said, I never like the guys who say we'll get him next year. It's supposed to bother you. And that was evident when Peyton walked clean off the field after Super Bowl 44 in 2010. He didn't shake hands with Drew Brees. He instead booked it out of there and was definitely on that day a poor sport. Now, my reaction at the time was the same as many. He just lost the damn Super Bowl, bro. It happens, like, it's really no big deal at all. I still feel that exact same way. The thing is, I keep that same exact energy when I'm judging other quarterbacks, in this case, Cam Newton. Bad narratives have dominated much of Cam Newton's career. At a certain point, it doesn't matter what you do, and Cam's narrative got thrown on him way back in college during the whole laptop thing. Then his dad had the scandal where he was trying to solicit bread from the schools for his son to play there once that came out. Those two things, mixed with Cam's A-type personality, the fact that he dress how he want and kind of do what he want and looks and sounds different than the majority of other franchise quarterbacks. It, it just all goes together for a beautiful bad guy narrative that the media loves. Narratives, man, they're strong. That's why you can look at a picture of Tom Brady and you'll see this. He's dejected because he put it all out there and it hurts because he's so damn passionate same picture of cam cam so selfish look at him he's giving up i knew he'd have it in him guy's not a leader a leader of men would never let their teammates see them like this goddamn narratives bro cam newton carried the panthers to the super bowl but once he got there he wasn't able to get the win and it appears that his career took a downturn after that in 2016 one year after his mvp season he had the worst passer rating of his career then in 2017 that fearless and hardcore way that cam plays the game finally started to catch up with him on the injury front he had to surgically repair a torn rotator cuff and he suffered a sprained knee that year now the common saying is that cam hasn't been the same since the super bowl and while it's true that his already flashy wardrobe kind of took another step toward the eccentric it can be argued that the first few games of 2018 we actually saw the best version of cam newton that can be argued before the injuries took control, the Panthers started that season off 6-2 before collapsing at the end. Cam, who still threw for over 3,000 yards despite not playing the full season healthy, had the highest completion percentage of his entire career, completing 68% of his passes. But Cam's nagging showed the injury only got worse as the season progressed, and he ended up having another shoulder surgery, this time on his throwing arm. While he was still recovering from that, Cam suffered a Liz Frank fracture, so basically he's been out of commission since 2018, and you already know in sports, people forget fast. There's a new regime in Carolina, and they decided to move on from Cam after failing to trade him. With that said, while it seemed like the owner was definitely behind Cam, it just never seemed like they actually got him the receiving weapons, man. I mean, he had, what, two years with Steve Smith on the back end of Steve Smith's career. They tried Calvin Benjamin, but that didn't really work out. Of course, he had the trusty Greg Olson pretty much the entire time, so that's great, but that's one tight end. And then by the time Christian McCaffrey got there, Cam was super beat up, then he got injured and he's been out ever since. A few days ago in this trash year of 2020, the Panthers released Cam Newton. People will see this as an opportunity to try to humble dude, but I really hope he lands on his feet. I'm hoping the medicals check out when other teams decide to take a look, as I know they will once this pandemic kind of slows down. And I know a whole lot of people have already said this, but it just makes so much damn sense. The Chargers have to be the place, right? You wanna sell tickets, win games? dude's a free agent. Cam left a lasting impression in Carolina. From all the make-a-wish stuff to the shoe signings and you can see that he's comfortable and very genuine when it comes to dealing with kids. Those are smiles that he definitely does not have to fake. He's as passionate as they are and can communicate with them genuinely. When I look at Cam's career to this point and the reason I hold Cam in such high regard and why he's one of my favorite players, his whole run in college football and in the NFL to this point remind me of a song by Frank Sinatra. And I'm in the video with a couple of lyrics from it. Yeah, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all, but I stand tall and did it my way. 
that's Cam Newton. He did it his own way. He didn't conform. And he came so damn close to that Super Bowl, bro. Ah, this would be a completely different conversation had he got it. Anyway, this was part one. After he goes to another team and goes through this season, be on the lookout for a part two. It's definitely going to be coming down the line after we kind of see how this thing plays out. I'm out at y'all next time. My name is Phil Lowe, Raz Fellas. Yeah, I'm no quitter Cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get her